Uh, joining me to discuss is Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, also a candidate for president, running for the Democratic nomination, also sits on Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, Senator, good morning to you. Good morning, Victor. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, I want to read good. for you a portion of uh, David Holmes' uh, opening statement to get your reaction to it. And for folks who have not heard this, uh, this is what he said he overheard between the conversation. Uh, this is U.S. Ambassador to the uh, European Union, Gordon Sondland, speaking with President Trump. This is after the uh, July Trump Zelensky call. This is from his opening statement. I heard President Trump ask, so he's going to do the investigation? Ambassador Sondland replied that he's going to do it, adding that President Zelensky will do anything you ask him to do. He goes on in the statement and says, I asked Ambassador Sondland if it was true that the president did not give a blank about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland agreed that the president did not give a blank about Ukraine. I asked why not, and Ambassador Sondland stated that the president only cares about big stuff. I noted that there was big stuff going on in Ukraine, like a war with Russia. And Ambassador Sondland replied that he meant big stuff that benefits the president, like the Biden investigation that Mr. Giuliani was pushing. Your reaction to that? It's entirely consistent with all the evidence that we've seen since the whistleblower complaint first came out. And it's entirely consistent with who we know Donald Trump is. He doesn't give a blank about anybody but himself. And the idea that we've got a president of the United States who's asking foreign leaders or demanding foreign leaders to uh, investigate his political rivals and withholding uh, aid to, the, to, in this case, Ukraine that the Congress has approved to def allow Ukraine to defend itself against Russia is unfathomable. And we cannot allow it to become the new normal of our politics. So we've only seen uh, two days of, of hearings, three witnesses thus far. Um, have you seen anything that you expect will shift or convince any of your uh, Republican colleagues in the Senate? I hope so. I mean, I think yesterday was a good day for America because it reminded people, of, uh, among other things, of the incredible patriots that work for the Foreign Service. You know, I was born overseas because my parents were working for the United States Embassy uh, in New Delhi. And to see people standing up for the nonpartisan work that the men and women of our uh, Foreign Service agencies, our intelligence agencies, our Defense Department are doing every day, notwithstanding the insanity of this president in the White House, mm. I hope that the Republicans will stand up as patriots as well and defend the Constitution and defend people that are trying to do their jobs under incredibly difficult circumstances, circumstances that President Trump has only made more difficult. Should the House consider an additional um, article of impeachment uh, considering the tweet that the president uh, sent out while Ambassador Yovanovitch was testifying? I absolutely believe that. It, it was outrageous for the president. Here's a, here's, a, here's a career ambassador with an unblemished record, as far as we know, testifying that she had basically been intimidated and thrown out of her job by a president who had complained to a foreign leader who doesn't have the best interest of the United States at heart. And in the middle of her testimony, uh, he he tries to intimidate her with tweets giving further evidence that <laughs> of what she said to begin with. Mm -hmm. And Victor, you know, this is this isn't just about this moment. Last weekend, the guy spent the entire weekend on Twitter and wa I guess watching cable television because that prompted his Twitter. If anybody else in America had put the stuff out that he put out on Twitter last week, he would have been in the HR department of his law firm or his insurance company and they would have said, if you keep doing this, you're going to be fired. And if his answer to that was, don't worry about it, I'm a stable genius, hmm. or I have unmatched wisdom, he'd be fired. But you know, the tragedy is this guy is our president, which meant while he was on Twitter all weekend, hmm. uh, Iran was doubling the number of centrifuges they're using to yeah. enrich uranium, and China was signing a trade deal with enough other countries that it represented half the GDP of the world, and America was nowhere. That's the cost of this. Well, Senator, let, let me get in here, because I, I want to talk about yeah. 2020. We don't have much time left. Sure. Uh, you have sure. been critical of Senator Warren's uh, Medicare for All plan, her approach to uh, implementing that. Yesterday, she published uh, on Medium uh, a, a plan, about 35 pages, uh, not 35 pages, the 35-minute read there, where she uh, says that she'll pass 
uh, within the first 100 days, an expansion that will cover all children and families that uh, max out at two times the poverty rate, but she'll get Medicare for all passed by the third year of her administration. Does this transition now make this more plausible uh, for you? What do you think? I don't think that a transition of two years is any transition at all. Not for the American people who want to have the choice for their families whether to have private insurance or public insurance. You know, sometimes you hear Bernie or Elizabeth say that people like me are protecting the insurance companies. Far from it. I could care less about the insurance companies. The question is, who should make the choice about what people's insurance is? Should it be Bernie and Elizabeth? or should it be the American people? Clearly the American people think it should be the American people since only a third of Democrats support Elizabeth's plan and I'm with President Obama. You know, we should not be going into this election nominating somebody who's genuflecting to the Twitter base of the Democratic Party and is not focused on the living, breathing human beings who, and all they want is to yeah. know that if their, you know, their kids' ed education's not defined by the, in the income their family has, that if you work hard, you can make a decent living, and you can retire with security. Yeah. You know, th this stuff is never going to pass, and I don't know whether Elizabeth knows that or not, but I, as a progressive Democrat, I do not want us to spend the next 10 years in a losing battle for Medicare for All, when what we need to be focused on is driving economic growth for everybody across well, this economy, Senator, a decent education, a decent health care. Senator, let me get in here pretty quickly. You're in New Hampshire. You've said you're going to stay in this race no matter what until the New Hampshire uh, primary. We know that uh, former governor uh, of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, he's filed uh, in the New Hampshire primary. Uh, he agrees with uh, a few of the elements that you talk about Medicare for all. He says he doesn't uh, appreciate the, the, the way that potentially, and I'm paraphrasing here, that Senator Warren wants to implement it. Does he crowd you out? You've got Biden at the top of the latest poll out of New Hampshire, Buttigieg in a, uh, a crowded uh, second place cluster. It, it, how does he complicate your plan to, to get a, a foothold there in New Hampshire? I actually don't think he does. I think what it reflects is how unsettled the polling is and how unsettled the field is. And that's certainly what I'm getting from people in New Hampshire. I mean, last night I was with people who said, by now we usually have people living in our houses that we, you know, campaigns that we've decided to support, mm -hmm. and we just haven't made those decisions yet. The way I look at this, Victor, is that I'm the only candidate in the race that's won two national races in a swing state. No one else has done that. And if yeah. we're going to win the presidency and win the Senate, we're going to have to win purple states. And to do that, we got to galvanize the Democratic base right. and win back some of the nine million people that want, voted for Barack Obama twice and for Donald Trump. And I think I put forward an agenda that can unify those folks. Senator Michael Bennett, Colorado, thank you so much. Thank you, Victor. Thanks.